Here's a little video showing you how we make some of the wheel sets for our miniature locomotives. In this case, it's a 10 and a quarter inch gauge new build electric locomotive for a commercial miniature railway. We've started with a flame cut blank from steel done from our drawings with all of the spoke triangular holes cut out to save time machining. The wheel is faced off and then bored through the centre to allow it to be placed on a mandrel so that the tread and flange can be machined. After those initial turning operations, it's transferred to the CNC milling machine where the more detailed profile can be added to our CAD drawings. So the triangular flame cut sections can be profiled and radiused and made to look much more like a, a traditionally shaped spoked wheel. This operation is normally done underneath a flood of cooling fluid, but we've turned that off for the cameras here just so that you can see a more accurate representation of what actually is being cut and how the shape is being created by the miller. As you can see, it creates quite a lot of splashing, but it makes for a smoother cut. Then it's transferred onto the Bridgeport milling machine manually again to do the slotting operation with a slotting head, which is cutting a vertical square cut keyway into the wheel so that we can put a square piece of metal in between the wheel and the axle to stop the wheel from rotating on the axle when it's in its final position. Then the inner surfaces of the wheel were bead blasted to create a good key for the paint. Next, raw steel bar was machined down manually again by Neil um, to the varying different diameters to create a tolerance fit onto the wheels. And keyways were milled into the axles to take the square cut steel keys which fit between the keyway and this axle and the wheel to lock, as we saw earlier, the wheel from rotating upon the axle. Next is the core bit really cool liquid nitrogen minus 200 degrees c this is one of the axles being dropped into that nitrogen and of course the axles at room temperature so it instantly boils the liquid nitrogen the axle now at minus 200 degrees c has shrunk and therefore it will drop straight into the hole in the wheel you can see the fixed keys in the keyways to locate the position of the wheel as it slides over and the hole in the wheel is actually two thou of an inch smaller than the shaft itself, than the axle. But because the axle is frozen, it shrunk by three or four thou, allowing it to slide beautifully through in its frozen state. Of course, when it warms up, it expands again and becomes an extremely tight fit upon the axle for the wheel. This is one of the gear shafts going in with a second gear going on, fitting over the keyway, which was that little wiggle and then that's a collar to hold the brake disc. You can see the moisture in the air instantly freezes when it touches the ice cold shaft. Um, but we do it this way because alternatively we could heat the gears or wheels up to expand them, but adding heat to the process can change the properties of the metal. So the cooling process is more controllable. And here's some finished wheel sets for you to have a look at. Thanks ever so much for watching.